So we heard, I think last night at this point, Drew Holiday has signed a contract extension with the Bucks for four years, $160 million, fourth year being a player option. And this is interesting. The Bucks now have their big three under contract for quite a while now. Giannis, Chris Middleton, and Drew Holiday all under contract. That's a really big move for the Bucks, and I think this is quite the positive one. With the the intent of the Drew Holiday trade was to re-sign him, and there was just no guarantee he was going to re-sign. But I think Drew Holiday is seeing something in this team, and I mean, who wouldn't? <laughs> a team that's been the one seed the prior two years up until this season, and. He's, I think he's definitely the player who can really turn around this team and really send them in a positive direction, especially from what I've heard from Bucks fans talking about this guy. I mean, Drew Holiday, he's a big difference maker, whether it be as a shot maker or, you know, maybe he's just operating off the ball or if he's, you know, playing defense, he's got a big impact on the team. But from what I've heard, he's had a big influence in Bucks finding schemes that work defensively that aren't just Mike Budenhoser, you know, running both Brooke Lopez and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Because that uh, that doesn't work. You can't run drop coverage in the playoffs and expect to survive against teams except for the Sixers. Especially against the Nets, a team that, you know, you're getting punished by every single player if you're playing drop coverage in the pick and roll. You know, <laughs> I think you've heard of Kyrie Irving, James Harden, and Kevin Durant. They're going to knock down those threes if you give it to them off the dribble off the screen. And that's just not happening if you're the Bucks team and you're trying to make it to the championship game. I mean, the Nets are their biggest threat to take them out. And if I'm being honest, this is the only team that has a chance at taking out the Nets. I mean, there are other teams in the Eastern Conference, but that, that team feels unstoppable and the Bucks might be one of the best shots at taking them down. And a lot of it has to do with their defensive ability. You can really match up decently well against the team. That's not something that a lot of other teams can claim to do. When you look at this roster, you got Drew Holiday. Okay, he's guarding either Harden or Irving. You got Chris Middleton. He's guarding the other one. You've got um, Giannis. You stick him on Kevin Durant. You got some of the best one-on-one -on -one defenders, just theoretically. I know it's not practically. You got theoretically some of the better defenders in the NBA, and you've got some of the better size matchups in the NBA. They really need to take advantage of that and run them alongside, you know, other matchups that make sense. Don't run Brooke Lopez when the Nets are playing small. <laughs> That's a pretty simple thought process, and maybe Mike Budenhoser, people were questioning if he could to figure it out on the defensive end. Seems like Drew Holiday is pushing him in the right direction to make a defensive adjustments. And having him around, having an intelligent player around like that who is able to correct faults in the coach, you know, a major position of power in the NBA and influence over a team and its success, well, that's a positive, you know, your NBA teams are very reliant on that coach. If you have someone who can, you know, fix the faults that the coach have, then we're cool with that. That's a great thing for Drew Holiday to do. And having him around seems like Budenhoser, the Bucks seem pretty committed to him. So, yeah, I mean, Drew Holiday should sp still be around and still be helping out Budenhoser, keeping him his job. Another thing Drew Holiday does is just, he's a shot maker. Seems like that was kind of an issue last season against, you know, the Heat in the first round. Giannis kind of got locked down and you kind of, you, you sit in there, you want Chris Middleton to hit every shot. He's a really efficient player, but if, you know, the number one option is locked down, he's going to look a little bit worse, you know? That's just what happens when a secondary option has to become a first option and becomes that primary option. They're going to lose that efficiency, and they're going to lose that killer instinct. You, I'm not losing the killer instinct, but, you know, they're reliant upon the player a lot more than if there was a, another number one scoring option really going off. I think this season, they're finding out how to beat the wall, you know, that wall defense that was effective by both the Magic and the Heat during the playoffs, and they're finding workarounds around it, but it's still tough to deal with, and, you know, Drew Holiday just adds another shot maker, guy can really knock down shots, take pressure off of Chris Middleton, especially in games that Giannis is struggling, 
and Chris Middleton doesn't have to be that number one option all the time. Drew Holiday can hit his fair share of shots off the dribble, off the screen, whatever it is, Drew Holiday is a cool player, and the Bucks are, you know, very happy to have that around. And, yeah, I mean, it's that shot making, it's those defensive corrections, and I don't know, you know, he's another guard to add in. He's definitely a much improved player compared to Eric Bledsoe, who, you know, really, you know, he, he's gone. He doesn't really play well in the playoffs. And Drew Holiday is also a better defender. Drew Holiday does a better job against mismatches size-wise. One of the better mismatched defenders in the NBA. Probably second best uh, compared to Marcus Smart. And then third best would probably be Chris Paul. But yeah, I'd say he's the second best mismatch defender in the NBA. Well, technical mismatch, since he is 6'3". And that's, you know, definitely a positive aspect to have during the playoffs. Quite a few switching, you know, switching does happen. And Drew Holiday can definitely be a proponent of switching. You know, a positive aspect to switching if he can, you know, handle himself against bigger size matchups. And, you know, you know, potentially guard a player like KD for a possession or two if needed. And Bucks 100% benefiting from that. We can point out Drew Holiday through 38 games this season. He's averaging 17, 4.6 rebounds, 5.4 assists. And he's shooting, what, 39% from three on 4.8 attempts per game. And give me a second. Music is playing again. And almost 51% from the field on 13.3 attempts per game for a effective field goal percentage of 57.9%. So Drew Holiday's having a solid season, not a killer season, but at the same time, he hasn't played with a Giannis Antetokounmpo up until now, also Chris Middleton. And we can also see the Bucks have really been improving out over the last while on their defensive side of things. They were up to 8th in defensive rating after hovering around 15-16, to 16. And they did improve it a lot, even before Drew Holiday came back from injury. So you gotta give them credit for that. Uh, and they're, yeah, they're sitting at number 8 right now. They're also doing a really good job of hitting the 3 ball. Um, they're 39% from 3, 39.2% on 37.2 attempts per game. They're really knocking it down from 3. It's not just Drew Holiday. You know, we're seeing players like Dante DiVincenzo, he's shooting 38.4%. Chris Middleton, 43.2%. Pat Connington is shooting 39%. Bobby Portis is shooting 47%. Brandon Forbes shooting 45%. You know, you got a, quite a few three-point shooters in there. And Drew Holiday, he can find them. He's a bit of a playmaker. You know, adding his secondary. I don't know. Sometimes, some nights he's going to be your primary playmaker. Some days he's going to be your secondary playmaker. Some days he's your third playmaker. <laughs> That's just how it's going to go with this Bucks team. It's an interesting team. They've got a shot at taking out the Nets, and that's what I'm happy about. As a Western Conference team fan, looking at my Phoenix Suns, it would be a lot nicer to see the the Bucks than the Nets in the finals. I think that goes for any Western Conference team. No one wants to play against the Nets. It seems quite likely that the Bucks end up playing the Nets, and that it's going to be my projection for the Conference Finals, regardless of how seeding looks. Actually, you know... It, you know what I mean. Regardless of who their other matchups are, I do foresee Bucks versus Nets in the finals, in the conference finals, and it's going to be an interesting series if Drew Holiday is going to be out there being the defensive coach, <laughs> and, you know, they've got the size matchups, they've got, you know, they've got the matchups. As long as they put it together defensively, they've got one of the best shots at taking out the Nets, and that, and that just makes me happy for the future. You've got your big three under contract, and that leaves them the room to build with the rest of the team what they will, uh, whether it be, you know, like keeping a guy like Dante DiVincenzo. Do you let Brooke Lopez walk? What do you do with the rest of this team? They have decisions to make, and they have their big three under contract. So that's an immense positive, and that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Maybe click like, maybe click subscribe, maybe leave a comment. I don't know. Anyways, I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.